Around noon on May 24th of 2023, three large radio telescopes right here on Earth received a strange radio signal that we've never really seen before. A signal containing a lot of features we expect from an artificial source and a signal that appeared to be coming from extraterrestrial intelligence. At least, that's what it seemed like, because it was designed to look that way. But it did come from outside of planet Earth. It actually came from Mars, taking approximately 16 minutes to arrive to planet Earth. And so, does that mean that we found some kind of an extraterrestrial intelligence right here in the solar system, or something else? Is it too early to celebrate? Well, as you can probably tell from the title of the video, the reality is that it was actually designed to look this way, and this was specifically created to mimic communication from extraterrestrial intelligence to the best of our abilities. In other words, several people behind SETI decided to actually perform this really intriguing experiment. They call it a sign in space. They decided to mimic a potential communication from extraterrestrial intelligence as if it was coming from outer space and as if it was coming from real aliens. But in this case, it was designed by an artist to specifically look alien, with the signal itself only appearing artificial, but at first not making any sense. But I guess more intriguingly, the signal itself is also somewhat cryptic. At the moment, nobody actually knows what it says. Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton. So let's talk a little bit more about this particular experiment slash art project, talk a little bit more about the ideas behind this and why this was done, but also discuss several other propositions and even another message that's going to be sent to outer space really soon as part of what we usually refer to as METI, Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence, also known as Active SETI, basically looking for aliens by trying to directly send messages to them. And here, let's actually start with what we know about a sign in space so far. Well, first of all, a lot of scientists have already actually applauded this idea, mostly because it's something that should have been done a long time ago. Sending a kind of a pretend signal from outer space in order to be captured and analyzed here on planet Earth is an excellent way to develop various techniques if one day it happens for real. For example, how are we going to interpret these various signals and what techniques are we going to use to try to understand what's being said? What sort of scientists and what sort of experts are we going to require for all of this? And what kind of analysis should be conducted first, especially if this involves global collaboration? And so to try to figure this out, this wonderful person, Daniela De Poli, essentially planned and organized a kind of a mock session, opening this opportunity for pretty much everyone to be able to join, inviting anyone who's interested in this to join the Discord community or to actually download the files directly in order to conduct some kind of a more independent research. And that's basically because once the message was received by three large radio facilities here on planet Earth, all of the files became publicly available. But all of these files are raw, as in these are just signals in what's known as SIGMF, Signal Metadata Format, a typical format often used in a lot of radio astronomy or radio emissions. But here, naturally, it's going to require more than just ability to analyze signals, or the ability to construct various graphs or find various patterns. In this case, it's going to require a lot more than astronomy because the signals were specifically designed to be sort of vague and sort of cryptic. Here, they want to bring a larger community all together in order to take a few weeks to figure out what's actually being sent to us and what the message potentially means. And so here the idea is to create something that's, I guess, more dynamic and involves people from various backgrounds and with various interests. With all of the raw data and process data, as well as the potential answer to the cryptic message, eventually being stored online for generations in the future. And to make all of this data and all of these files last, and to avoid them being erased by service going down one day, they decided to use decentralized storage through Filecoin. Nowadays, not everyone is a big fan of crypto, but in this case, Filecoin does provide intriguing technology, allowing us to store files for a very long time through essentially decentralized storage. And so, by the time this project is finished, hopefully we'll have at least some guidelines on how to, maybe one day, interpret all of these messages. And so, definitely a pretty intriguing project. But just like similar METI projects or messaging extraterrestrial intelligence projects before, in this case, this is more of an artistic project than anything scientific, at least in my opinion. And that's because, just like previously with similar projects, such as the Sonar project that sent a message to a nearby star back in 2017, this was more or less done for cultural, philosophical, or in this case, musical reasons, without necessarily doing a lot of scientific analysis prior to the message being sent. 
And obviously it is still a pretty intriguing experiment that I'm definitely going to be following for a few weeks just to see where all of this goes. This was still designed by a human being and even the alien communication itself is extremely anthropomorphized. Everything from the frequency to the way the signals were transmitted, all of this was human in nature. And based on a lot of assumptions we've been making for several decades. But that's of course a different topic for a different day because we're slowly moving into the Fermi paradox. And so even though a lot of scientists do expect that we're going to hear something at some point, quite a lot of scientists believe the opposite. The so-called Great Silence, or the reason we're not hearing anyone from anywhere, is indeed maybe because there is no one there. Nevertheless, for many decades now, various types of missions try to communicate with someone somewhere out there. With the first attempt to communicate any kind of a message in the bottle being back in 1972. This was the Pioneer 10 probe that contained the plaque that you see right here, created by Carl Sagan and Frank Drake. And a few years later this was adopted to the Voyager probes, which in 1977 contained what you see right here. But the radio messages began in 1974. The iconic Arecibo message was the first, although in this case this was just a test of technology, not so much an attempt to communicate with anyone. And the actual message was sent really far away. M14 cluster located thousands of light years away. And today we know that not a lot of these clusters contain planets either. And then every few years, here and there, there will be a new message sent somewhere else. With the most recent signal sent in 2017, being sent to the planet you see right here, sometimes referred to as Gliese 273b. This one is actually terrestrial and is somewhat intriguing for a lot of other reasons, but even if anyone hears our transmission, we're not expected to hear anything back until at least 2030. Also in this case they actually sent a bunch of music, so instead of a signal back, hopefully we'll get some kind of a video back, of a bunch of aliens dancing. I mean at least we can hope, right? And now we have a new proposition where the scientists want to use the world's largest radio telescope, the Chinese FAST, in order to send a message to millions of different stars anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 light years away from us. In other words, taking a kind of a shotgun approach. And they actually want to send something that's about 100 times bigger than the Arecibo message, with the coded message containing approximately 25,000 bytes. Including a really cool pixelated version of planet Earth, the frequency of communication that should be used with the planet, and some other intriguing imagery as well. In this case this is really as cryptic as it gets. And intriguingly we've discussed this particular message a few months ago, with the overall conclusion being that it will be very difficult for even the smartest people on the planet to actually make sense of any of this without having some kind of a basis. So in that sense we don't even know if this is useful. But the question is, is it dangerous? Are we putting ourselves in any danger by sending all of these messages to potentially hazardous species out there? Well, technically there are lots of ways of answering this, but in short the overall answer is not really. It's totally safe and nothing is probably going to happen. And there are many reasons for this. For example, even though there was a lot of concern about various radio transmissions from, for example, TV stations back in the 80s and 90s when it came to possibly aliens detecting us, today we know based on various calculations that as soon as these signals cross the solar system, they actually become as quiet as the background noise. So it would be practically impossible for anyone out there to hear our planet. Now these specific signals with very powerful telescopes can obviously be heard from farther away, but even if anyone hears it, it's a really big assumption that anyone is going to act on it or that some kind of a dangerous alien species is going to come and invade us. Unlike assumptions in various science fiction novels, there is absolutely no reason to assume that anyone wants to destroy us even if they discover us. More importantly when it comes to messaging extraterrestrials or the idea of extraterrestrial communication, there are no regulations, there are no laws and you're more than welcome to conduct your own experiments as much as you want. And that's mostly because we have so many other concerns right here on the planet that are just a little bit closer to home and way more important or more concerning at present time. We have so many other existential threats that do not involve aliens. And finally, and I guess more importantly, we make an assumption that anyone actually has a way to communicate in the same way that we do. For some reason we make an assumption that radio communication is going to be some kind of a universal language any advanced species would understand. But we barely have an ability to communicate with species that are similar to us. How do we expect to communicate with something that's very different? For example, despite genetic similarities, we have a lot of trouble communicating and understanding chimps, gorillas or other apes. Which means that we're making really big assumptions. We're assuming that someone out there 
is going to understand our strange monkey language. And that's of course just some of the reasons why we probably shouldn't worry. As a matter of fact, we're going to end up learning so much more if we do communicate or try to communicate with someone out there, and if we conduct these experiments like the one that's being done by SETI right now. Now we're not going to learn more about extraterrestrial intelligence, but the truth is that we're going to learn more about ourselves. And that's of course the important part. That's why I think a lot of people should join this and participate in this unusual experiment slash, I guess, artistic piece? I'm not entirely sure what the main purpose of this is just yet, but it's still kind of interesting. Anyway, on that note, you can find all of the links and all of the Fermi Paradox videos related to this in the description below, and we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once we have some answers about the SETI project, or once this particular message is sent somewhere out there for someone to hear. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support the show on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.